They're suing and sued Steven Richer. It sounds like they're not checking legal status appropriately. Right now, we've got a disaster in Arizona, by the way, because they identified 210,000 votes that we do not know the citizenship status of those votes. That's the point. We want you to ask and determine whether these people have status or not. So if they don't have a number, use other identifiers. That probably means they're not legal. Even if they were illegal, apparently, we're not gonna remove them because early voting is already underway. Arizona is now refusing to check legal status. That's according to one complaint filed by Strong Communities Foundation of Arizona. They're suing and sued Stephen Richer, but a judge just came back out and found that they lost. So Stephen Richer and our secretaries, the people who run our elections, win this one. And what we find is that it sounds like they're not checking legal status appropriately. So what the lawsuit, the basis is, is a demand by Strong Communities that they do that. Actually, you have to check this against federal databases to make sure that people are actual citizens when they're registering. Now, they're saying that the government is not doing that. And of course, the District Court of Arizona is going to find in favor of the government saying, as we saw in 2020, it's all about standing. Now, here's what the judge wrote. And this opinion came from this judge. It's a 22 pager. We'll hit the highlights coming out of a federal district court. Judge's name is the Honorable. Krissa M. Lanham, United States District Judge. So let's see what is inside of this. Now the judge writes, 51 days before the election, the plaintiffs sought a motion seeking to require every county recorder in Arizona to perform, quote, voter list maintenance by sending the list to Homeland to verify their citizenship and immigration status. And right now we've got a disaster in Arizona, by the way, because they identified 210,000 votes that we do not know the citizenship status of those votes. And there's a question about about 110,000 of them and where those names came from. So they say, okay, send it over to Homeland to verify the status. Now, this is done very quickly, right? 51 days before. So we're going to see a timing component to this as well. Now, by their own admission, the recorders by the plaintiffs, many of whom who had not been served with this, they would be required to submit tens of thousands of voter names against these databases. And the injunction would also send this over to the AG. Now they say, look, you are not entitled to an injunction, okay? We're not going to force them to go check these lists because you haven't shown that you have standing yet. You raise no more than a generalized grievance here that is shared by every Arizona voters that elected officials must follow the law. I know, imagine that. Now, the plaintiff, the person bringing the suit, has not established any individualized injury in fact. You have not been harmed yet and therefore you lack standing. The Ninth Circuit says that we have to dismiss this because you haven't been shown to have been harmed, right? And we saw a lot of this in 2020. Now, alternatively, plaintiffs are also not in entitled to emergency relief because the election is too close to require the action they request. So we just discovered this big fat 210,000 vote problem. So she files this complaint immediately saying, can you please check this database against an actual database? No, it's too close. Oh, which is convenient because Stephen Richer announced that the finding of all of those votes very recently. And everybody's asking the question. That's interesting, Stephen. When did you learn about this? When did this come to your attention first? And why did you wait so long? to bring this to our attention, especially after you've already told us that 2020 was perfect and free and fair, and 2022 with Kerry Lake when we had the day of election voting problems, you said that was free and fair too. But now all of a sudden, we find, find there's 210,000 votes that are questionable or registrations that are concerning. The court declines to order Arizona to divert resources from preparing for the general and instead submitting thousands of requests to Homeland when they've not even shown a clear-cut injury, right? Then they'll sue after the election and say, there were a bunch of illegal votes. And they'll say, oh no, sorry, latches apply. You should have brought this sooner. You should have complained about this particular issue sooner or something. And they'll dismiss it on standing in that background, in that manner as well. So here's the facts, background from the judge. They say, okay, no party has requested an evidentiary hearing here. Federal law prohibits non-citizens from voting. So does Arizona law. Now, despite those prohibitions, the plaintiffs allege that non-citizens appear on voter lists and they have voted. So they say, well, it's a against the law, so they can't do it or they won't do it. 
Are you investigating to see if they have or not? The focus of this lawsuit is on ensuring the accuracy of the lists that are on the county recorder's rolls. The parties refer to efforts at maintaining accuracy. They call it voterless maintenance. Now, federal law requires states to perform voterless maintenance in certain ways. Arizona law requires county recorders to perform various acts of maintenance. In 2022, Arizona adopted additional maintenance requirements pursuant to Arizona law. And the plaintiffs now allege that county recorders are not following the 2020 22 law. They're not complying with their obligations under the 2022 laws, and they're discriminating against certain voters by only submitting citizenship checks to Homeland when a voter has provided an alien number or other numeric identifier, right? So Arizona passes a law, says do these things. County recorder says, well, we'll do it, but only in certain incidences. Like only when they have a Homeland number, then we'll check it with Homeland. But if they don't have a Homeland number, then we're not going to check it. And we say, that's the point we want you to ask and determine whether these people are have status or not so if they don't have a number use other identifiers that probably means they're not legal now arizona's system of voter registration is bifurcated such that some voters are only eligible to vote in federal elections not state or local ones this system developed due to an interplay between federal and state election laws because the feds are like you can't check status now a federal statute the nvra requires all states to quote accept and use the voter registration form that's authorized by a federal body right and so that's the fed form is designed they say you can vote in federal elections and it requires applicants to certify under penalty of perjury that they're citizens, but it doesn't require them to submit proof. Okay, so the federal form just has a box. Are you a citizen? Yes. Under penalty of perjury, we'll charge you with a crime. Are you sure? Yes. Do they charge anybody with that? Do they even investigate that? No. The NVRA prohibits states from imposing proof of citizenship requirement on registrants who use the federal form, right? So our own government is so rotten that they prohibit states themselves from being being able to regulate the citizenship, the citizens, and how they vote in elections. Well, they can still vote for president. Although Arizona is required to accept the federal form, it is also permitted to use its own state registration form that may require information the federal form does not. Voters who use the Arizona form and submit proof of citizenship are registered to vote in federal, state, and local elections. If you use the federal form and you provide proof of citizenship, then again, you can vote in all elections. But individuals who register only using the federal form and without providing proof of citizenship are only allowed to vote in primary and general elections for federal races. They're called federal only voters and we have no idea if they're actual citizens other than they check a box. That's it. You, you can't actually verify. The NVRA does not preclude states from denying registration based on information in their possession, which establishes an, an applicant's ineligibility. And so there's an interplay. It requires Arizona to allow individuals to apply to register to vote using federal forms, but after receiving the application, it may investigate the applicant's eligibility and deny registration to any person who it finds ineligible to vote. So Arizona can take the federal form, check it, say, nope, bad registration, and then get rid of it. So they can check it. Let's see if they do. In 2022, Arizona amended its election statutes to impose stricter voter list maintenance for federal only voters. It's Arizona law. These relatively new voter list maintenance requirements serve as the basis for the present suit. So don't act like this is new. Now, under Arizona's 2022 laws, county recorders must take specific actions after receiving a new voter registration application on a federal form when it's not accompanied by evidence of citizenship. Within 10 days after getting the application on the federal form, a county recorder, the law says from 2022, shall use all available resources to verify the citizenship status of the applicant. Law says, at a minimum, the county recorder shall compare the information on the federal form with the following provided the county has access to these things. The Department of Transportation databases of Arizona driver's license or non-operating identification licenses, they should check. The Social Security and administration databases, the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, a national association called the EVVE, or any other state, town, or federal databases. Okay, so verify the status. Some new voterless maintenance provisions require county recorders to perform certain monthly checks to the extent practicable by comparing the voter list to the Social Security or to immigration services.
services. But the new provisions that they invoke in this suit does not require monthly action. Instead, it requires to the extent practicable, right, practicable, the county recorder shall review all of this and confirm to see if it should cancel registrations, which is what they're latching onto. So that provision of the rules. Now, finally, the 2022 changes imposed a new requirement regarding sharing of information with the attorney general. The statute reads the secretary of state and each county recorder shall make available to the AG a list of all federal only voters, the people who just check a box and say, yep, I'm a citizen, let me in. The applications should be reported. So we have the parties, obviously these people are suing. Yvonne Cahill, a big local political person is naming this. The allegations are as follows. They're saying, look, they say that the state, Adrian Fontes, our secretary of state, AKA Arizona's Jocelyn Benson, right? Have failed to comply with the rule changes after Carrie Lake's 2022 election. Plaintiffs argue that one obstacle the county recorders have faced in performing voter list maintenance is that Fontes has neglected to obtain access to three databases that the statute specifically require they are consulted with. He's supposed to get access to save the Social Security Administration and the EVVE databases, but they do not name Fontes as a defendant and even universal use of these three databases would not satisfy them because these databases are insufficient. So thus they allege that consulting these databases would also be insufficient, right? So they're saying you're complaining about something that's not even going to solve the problem completely. Instead, they allege that this Arizona law and this Arizona law require our secretaries to make specific requests to Homeland to ask status of citizenship. They, they say you have to ask. They reach this conclusion by referencing U.S. code, which requires Homeland to respond to citizenship requests, saying the U.S. code, if you ask them to verify, they have to respond. These requests are referred to as 1373 requests. So we'll just call them like status checks. So if a state sends a status check, they say Homeland has to respond. They believe that Homeland's responses to status checks would provide accurate results. They further say that these status checks are an available resource and they need to use those they have access to that and they've got a mandatory obligation under Arizona law and they can use federal law to go check. So in their view, federal law requires county recorders to submit these requests to fulfill their obligations to remove ineligible voters. And they say, quite frankly, they're not doing this. They are not submitting these checks. Their, their evidence, they say, is the number of federal only voters is increasing in recent months by unprecedented amounts. They're just bringing them in by the boatload. In other words, they believe that there has been an unprecedented surge of individuals registering as federal only votes. And if they did the status checks with Homeland, they would discover they're not eligible. Now, they don't have any other factual allegations to support this. Well, how could they? They're not checking. They don't have the names and they can't check because the secretary has them. Despite this, they claim that they've been forced to expend money and resources to monitor data about federal only box checking voters. And it claims it has had to expend more resources on educating state legislatures about solutions. Now they fault the county recorders for not checking, but they also complain the recorders have refused to provide Chris Mays, who is another Democrat, the list. The statute states each county shall make the list available. And they say it's a procedural problem. Now there are also, here's the procedural history of how this all came about. We'll fast forward through a lot of this. And the opinion from the judge is, sorry, you lack standing. Sorry. Your motion is trying to alter the status quo. Here, the court doesn't need to reach the merits of this because you don't have standing. Even if you did, the court would decline because we're only 25 days out before the election. See, so the cheating happens at the last minute. And then when you go complain about it, they say, oh, sorry, it's too close to the election, right? Even though Stephen Richer and, and you know, they're not following the rules. Defendants argue that plaintiffs lack standing to sue. They say, nope, sorry, you can't do it. And if you want a preliminary injunction, you actually have to have an injury, in fact, and there's not a big enough injury here. The injury is trying to screen out people that don't have claims. Cahill doesn't have an injury either, and there's no organizational standing or injury there as well. The judge just says, there's nothing we can do. Merely sending of a letter to Homeland, sending them and not remove this. We can't get this solved. It's not going to redress the claims of disenfranchisement and vote dilution in this election. And so we're not going to do it on an emergency basis either. Even if they had standing, it's too soon. It's too close to the election, which is, of course, why they dropped everything at the last minute. The Purcell principle, don't prevent, don't cause voter confusion. Don't create 11th hour administrative burdens. And so now no injunction, not going to change anything. They're not going to be checking 
checking all these people, again, all you have to do is use a federal form and check the box. They waited until shortly before the election to file this lawsuit, despite allegedly suffering irreparable harm since the voterless maintenance laws went into effect. Well, we just learned that they're not doing the maintenance. There's 210,000 people that are, their, their status is unknown. They have not made a clear cut showing of harm, nor any action. The court must tread carefully and decline to grant the relief. They lack standing. There's been no injury in fact. And the relief they want is compelling every county recorder to investigate tens of thousands of voters. The investigation alone is not going to redress their claim. And even then, we're not going to remove those, even if they were illegal, apparently, we're not going to remove them because early voting is already underway. So as you can see, our according to the complainants here, the plaintiffs, our Secretary of State is just not doing the work that they've been ordered to do. And they're just not getting access to the database. Well, how can you check anything if you don't have access to it? So another situation in Arizona, Stephen Richer, who lost his election, is going to be on his way out. These people, in my opinion, are creating infrastructure changes like this. There are laws in place. They all come out and they say, no, the law says this and the law says that, but they're not doing what the law tells them they have to do. Or if they're doing it, they're just token doing it. Oh yeah, we'll check with Homeland, but only if they have a Homeland number. Well, we want you to check the people without a Homeland number, because if they have a Homeland number, that means they probably have lawful status because they've gone through Homeland and they've got some reason to be here. But if they don't, that's the question. So of course, in Arizona, like elsewhere, our Secretary of State, Adrian Fontes, no different than Jocelyn Benson or Jenna Griswold or any of these other secretaries who are going to act as the referees, the scorekeepers, the scoreboard managers, and do everything they can to create unfair and unfree elections and dilute our votes by having people come in who are not citizens who just check a box and get registered to vote and get a ticket to vote, get a ballot because of Adrian Fontes. Of course, we'll keep our eyes on this case.